we know with regards to major sins. Where does it lie? Where if we were to put shirk in a position of worst or the least of issues? It is the worst, the most severe, the one sin if one dies upon it, that their abode is hellfire eternally. The most dangerous and detrimental of the major sins is shirk. Associating partners with Allah. Essentially, this is what shirk is. When one claims that other than Allah deserves worship, or alongside Allah we worship others, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shares partners by way of a child, or a spouse, or a mother, or a father, billah. The greatest command in opposite to shirk is at tawheed. Tawheed, in opposition to Tawheed, is shirk. After Tawheed, we have Sunnah. Opposite to Sunnah, Bid'ah. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says, لا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتقعد مذموما مخذولا And do not set up with Allah any other God, or you will sit down reproved, forsaken, in the hellfire. It is a sin that is not forgiven if the person dies upon that sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the oft forgiving, most merciful. If a person were to be upon shirk for 99 years and just before their death, they chose to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tawheed, worshipping Him alone, inwardly and outwardly, truthfully from their heart and upon their tongue and upon their limbs, meaning their words and their actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of their sins and enter them into the fold of Tawheed, the fold of Islam, and change all of their sins that they once committed into good deeds on their scales. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter them into Jannah for eternity. And in opposition to that, if one were to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for 99 years, and on their deathbed, Satan comes to them and he says, bow your head to me and I will ease your distress. And he chooses to do so. And he dies then afterwards. This person would have died the death of a mushrik. For he gave worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good ending. This is what we wish for. For the best ending. It is the greatest form of oppression. Vulm. And it is the evilest of the sins. Allah said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Verily, Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases. We know there are punishments for all types of sins. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specified specific punishments. As zani Specific to them are, are matters that occur to them. Hooks into the private areas. Wail. The valley in hellfire specific to people. The ones who consume riba which we'll get to. They have their specific punishment in hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may choose due to their tawheed to forgive all their sins. However, if one dies upon shirk. Their, their abode is eternity in hellfire. And remember, and always keep this in the back of your mind, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. That none is more just than Allah. And by Allah, this is a just punishment for the mushrikeen. They are deserving of it. And that the Muslims are deserving of an abode in paradise eternally. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his ultimate wisdom 
has given the just recompense to each and every individual. In the advice of Luqman the wise, when he said to his son, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirka la dhulmun azim. O oh my son, join not in worship others with Allah. Verily joining others in worship with Allah is a great wrong indeed. Luqman the wise, he was known as. He gave his son many words of advice. His son being his most precious asset. His most honoured asset. That he wished better for him than he would have for himself. As a father we know that. You wish for your child better than what you have for yourself. The advice that Luqman could give to his son out of pure love for his child. Out of pure love for his son, he said to him, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah. My son, do not associate partners with Allah. And this is what we should learn from and teach to our children. My son, my daughter, all I ask is that you worship none alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you as a son and as a daughter to your parents, Always remember that they want the best out of you. And the most they fear for you is shirk. So steer away from shirk to the best of your abilities. Because truly if they knew what was best for you, and if you knew what was best for your children, it is to steer away from shirk as Luqman wanted for his son. Shirk is to make other than Allah equal to Allah in any of his rights. However supplicates to. These are... Actions of worship. We've heard these many times before. Supplication. What else? Sacrifice. Like a sheep, a cow, a camel. Sacrifice. This is done for who? For Allah alone. Vows. When one vows, swears by. Can we swear by other than Allah? No. Only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al isti'ana. Seeking help, aid, or gives any, if a person gives any act of worship other than Allah, they have committed shirk. Allah said, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say indeed my prayer, my rights of sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah. Lord of all that exists, he has no partner. And of this I have been commanded, I am a, and I am the first of the Muslims. When the polytheists enter the fire on the day of judgment, they will say, as Allah told us, in kunna lafi mubeen, idh bi rabbil alameen. By Allah, we were truly in a manifest error. That day they will come to realize. When we held you as equals in worship with the Lord of all that exists. So whoever deems anyone or anything to be equal to Allah in any of his rights. That person is from the mushriki. And the greatest of oppressors. And this person is committing the worst of major sins. The worst of the worst. Though they may have good character from kindness and love and care. If we were to look at all of the major religions across the globe, Christianity, Judaism, even Buddhism and Hinduism, what do they propagate? Love, tenderness, care, friendship. But we must realize there is one pure pristine religion that differentiates from all of the rest. It propagates every goodness that has ever been mentioned in the history of time. Yet above all else, it propagates the most important of goodness. And it is the relationship with the slave, from the slave to his creator. The most important. That you worship none alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what makes our religion the best in the world. The best to have ever existed. 
And this is the tr- the religion Allah has chosen for Himself. In the Dina and Allah al Islam. Verily, the religion with Allah is Islam. We've covered shirk in many, many, many instances. So I won't go into depth. That is where we'll stop and we move on to the next sin, which is magic. The Shaykh, he said, magic is from the major sins. And it's from the gravest of the major sins because it is disbelief in Allah. Let it be understood. Magic is kufr billah. Disbelief in Allah. The magician can only become a magician by disbelieving in Allah, by becoming a kafir and associating partners with him, obeying Satan, obeying the shaitan and renouncing the book of Allah, the Lord of all that exists. This is the state of the magician. You will never come across a magician who is not a kafir. All of them are kuffar. نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُ الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Allah says, a party of those who were given the scripture, they were given the book of Allah at that time, They threw away the book of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. They followed what the shayateen gave out falsely of the magic in the lifetime of Sulaiman. This occurred in the time of the Prophet Sulaiman, the King Solomon, the King Sulaiman, our Prophet, the son of Dawood alayhi salam, alayhi masalam, both of them. Sulaiman alayhi salam did not disbelieve. But the shayateen disbelieved teaching men magic. Who taught them? As Allah said, not Sulaiman. It was the shayateen who taught these men magic. This is kufr billah. Disbelief in Allah. And Allah cleared Sulaiman of these charges of magic because magic is disbelief in Allah. For those who said that Sulaiman fell into this sin of magic, they lied against Allah. They lied against Sulaiman. Allah freed him of such words. Magic is a term used for incantations and spells. Which affect the heart, the body, the wealth of a person afflicted. And furthermore to that, they are also known as tying the knot and blowing on the knots. This is from form of magic. So the people who enter into this act of sorcery, of magic, they recite incantations. They tie knots and they blow onto those knots. And this is known from a sihr. And this occurred in the old times, even in the time of our prophets and messengers, up until the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prevalent in nowadays in this very country, in this very city, all across the globe. Some magic causes death, while other types of magic may cause illness. And some magic causes division between the spouses. Some magic is real, while other magic is only illusionary. So you have real magic, and you have illusionary magic. And inshallah, we'll go furthermore into the understanding of what different types of magic they are. What is illusionary? illusionary? What is real magic? قال بل ألقوا فإذا حبالهم وعصيهم يخيل إليه من سحرهم أنها تسعى موسى said nay throw you first throw their sticks to turn them into snakes if we remember the story then behold their ropes and their sticks by their magic appeared to him as though they moved fast in Surah Taha the real magic has an effect upon the person afflicted So if a magician were to perform magic on a person, then that person themselves will be afflicted, such that that it may cause them their death or sickness, separation between him and his wife or her and her husband. And other than that, Allah said, 
فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ And from them, people learn that by which they cause separation between a man and his wife. And wallahi, يعني, we've heard these stories in specific where a brother would come and he would explain and he would say, I married my wife, wife with true love towards her, wishing none other but to spend the rest of my life with her, completely attracted to her. She was gorgeous to me. All of a sudden, he cannot stand her smell. He cannot look at her. He doesn't want to live in the same house as her. He spends 18 hours at work and after work he doesn't want to go home. This is from the stories that we've heard, not because she's annoying, it's because he's been afflicted with magic. Because prior to that, he loved her. And does it end there? There is no sickness except Allah has sent down its cure. And we'll come to see that bin Allah ta'ala if we have time today. If not, we move on next week to that part. Wamin Sharrin Nafathati fil Uqad and from the evil of the witchcraft. When they blow in the knots. Now this is in Surah Al-Falaq. This is what I mentioned earlier. What they do, and it was known in the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Jewish women, they would tie the knots and blow onto it. Tie the knot and blow onto it. And some ways in which we understand how to remove the magic, once that piece of, of magic is found, where they've tied knots over it, that you are, there are ways in which to remove that magic, to dispose of it. So it's not just a matter of untying the knots and burning and throwing it away. You, you recite on it, you untie, you recite on it, you untie, inshallah. Yeah, and he will explain that in detail in some time. Not in this particular lesson, because we want to cover the main points, inshallah. But for anyone who has, has any of these forms of magic, bring it so we can destroy it, inshallah. This is an honor for us to destroy it. This, these items. This is referring to the magicians and seeking refuge from their evil is proof that the male and female magicians can cause harm and have an effect upon the person afflicted by making him sick or other than that. Magic is from the greatest and most dangerous of evils. In our society as Muslims and in other societies can afflict any society only with evil. If he spreads... Throughout the community, it will destroy and bring about the most severe harm. The magicians, this is important to know. The magicians will increase in a land, in a country, when the light of Tawheed has been dim, has been lessened. And when the clarification of Tawheed is lessened, you will find by Allah magic infested in the lands where Sufism has spread. Why? By Allah, Sufism dims the light of Tawheed. Hence the reason why you will find the opposite to Tawheed being prevalent, easily found within those lands. May Allah protect us in the Muslim lands. When the people become ignorant of Tawheed and the correct Aqeedah, the magicians are able to increase in the land. But in the flag, where the flag of Tawheed is raised, and the da'wah is strengthened, the magicians disappear. And they will be annihilated by the permission of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. For this reason, the people are in severe need of Tawheed being explained, clarified and established, along with its opposite being warned against, and its opposite is shirk billah. Many, many stories. We have heard where a magician will try to will be asked to afflict a particular person and no matter how strong or how powerful that magician may think they are, they will not be able to do so. They will return to the person and say, we cannot do anything to them. Turn around, you find this person, his tawheed is strong. His daily connection with Allah is no less than five times a day in salah. And what they stick to, two very important things. Can anyone tell me? Two very important things. Adhkar al-sabah wal masa. Barakallah fiqh. The dhikr of the morning and the dhikr of the evening. 
which we'll come to. Barakallahu feek. Um. Furthermore, to the, to the understanding of magic. We have from the works of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, an understanding of the illusionary magic from real magic. And it's been broken down by Abu Ayyad, Barakallahu feek. And he mentions an elaboration of the details given by the scholars in this matter of sihr and takhil. Sihr being magic, takhil being illusion. We have made clear the various tafsilat, the different classifications of sihr and takhil. <coughs> and explanations from the scholars and the broad observation made throughout those articles was that sihr, takhili, Illusionary magic is a vague, ambiguous term that can cause confusion because a number of things enter into it and without separating out the various things that enter into it in the speech and discussion of the scholars, misunderstanding can arise. So there is illusionary magic. And we'll come to realize some of that illusionary magic is considered sihr. And some of it is not based on the linguistic term that they call this magic. And we'll come to see, inshallah. Any questions, we'll cover them at the end. Bismillahi ta'ala. A. Magic done by the eyes such that a person sees a child as a puppy or a, a small dog or a spouse as an animal when that is not in reality. So the person... Truly is a human. The baby is a baby. The woman is a woman. But the person afflicted with the sihr, he sees them as other than that. He may see them as an animal. may see them as something other than that. So yet everyone else do not see what one, the one afflicted with this magic is seeing. This involves the agency of the devils. The person doing so has associated their works has worked alongside the shayateen, the jinn. And is from that which is, what is the ruling on that? No, no, not the had, the ruling. The ruling on that, person dealing with the shayateen. Major kufr. Kufrun akbar. Kharij min al millah. Barakallah fikum. Here there is no external effect upon anything. Since the magician cannot turn entities into other entities. A magician cannot turn a human into a frog, like in the movies. Cannot turn a human into a duck. They can't do this. Illusionary. If they afflict the eye of a person with this magic, that may seem to them as a duck, as a frog, or whatever it may be, but that is not truly the case. But they can bewitch the eyes to affect the person. This is referred to as a sihr at takhili Illusionary magic. It is called illusionary magic. But is it still considered magic? Yes. Is it trickery? No. Not in the sense of a fake trick. No, it is magic that is performed. But it is still called sihr takhili as in magic done upon the eyes to make a person he is seeing things not so outward reality. So not so outwardly. The truth is that that person did not turn or change entities, but the person afflicted, bewitched, sees such. The heart and the mind or intellect. And the person refers to magic done upon the body, the heart, the mind or intellect. This is sihr haqiqi. True magic. When the person's mind, heart, body has been affected, this is true, real magic. It is called so because it has an actual, true, real, physical, observable effect upon a person in his body, heart or mind. And leads to harm or separation or loss of life or wealth and so on. Do we know the difference? Sihr haqiqi, true magic, or sihr takhili. They are both magic, but they are separated. One is truly affected, that is haqiqi. 
a person bewitched, but is not truly the case. Their eyes have been have been uh, magic has fallen upon their eyes to see other than what is true. This is takhili. Tayyib. Second point. Magic which involves the agency of the devils in order to perform feats and tricks which cannot otherwise be done. So you have a performer, one performing magic tricks, but he cannot do so without working with the jinn. Is that clear? So he's a magician, but he's a real magician. So he does work with the shayateen to perform the tricks which he wishes to do, which cannot otherwise be done by humans, which are not trickery, involving sleight of hand. And this is found with the magicians and people of kufr, shirk, deviation, heresy and innovation. And this enters into the arena of shirk and kufr. And these feats are done when the people concerned enter into satanic states. This magician is no longer in their sane mind as a normal human like each and every one of us. They enter into a satanic, demonic state in order to be able to do so. In other terms, we hear often, he sold his soul to the devil. In order to do so, to enter into these satanic states, they sell their soul to the devil. This is the common term used these days. So they make this contract with the shayateen in order for them to get back this ability to perform the tricks in which they do. As a result of which they earn the assistance of the devils or the devils enter them, they possess them, and therefore they stab themselves or swallow snakes, or levitate in the air, or make things float in the air, and so on. So when we see these tricks, not being tricks due to technology or the likes, that that's truly happening, we know that this is sorcery of that kind. Magic, third point, magic which involves slate of the hand using deception. No involvement with devils. He's good with his hands. He's a trickster. And this action in itself is not major kufr. Laysa kufrun akbar. <coughs> Here a person appears to see something. So the person they're doing a trick to, this person appears to see something. But in his eyes are actually seeing what is taking place. But it is all mere trickery using misdirection. He puts a, the card up his sleeve. He kills one pigeon and showing the pigeon coming back to life. But really the pigeon is dead in a cage in the back of his jacket, which is hidden. This is not real sorcery. This is trickery. They do not use the shayateen. They're using sl a slate of hand. I mean, they're being very quick and they know what they're doing. They're professionals. This is not considered major kufr. Not considered major kufr. Specialized knowledge about the properties of things used of advanced or hidden technology and what is similar to that. From an outward perspective, much of this type of magic would look the same. So if you were to see this magic and you were to see the other magic, it looks the same. What the one working with the jinn who's levitating above the ground or the other person who's got a thin rope and you can't see him levitating, but really he's just been picked up by a rope that you can't see. They both look the same in outward appearance and form as the type of magic involving the devils, even though in reality of the matter it is mere machination, machinations, tricks, skills and stratagems aimed at deceiving and diverting attention. Does that make sense? It is, a, it is called magic linguistically. It looks like the magic of those who work with the devils because the end result is the same. This person's levitating, that person's levitating. That person is using a rope you can't see. This person is working with the jinn. Either he himself has been possessed or has been picked up by jinn that you cannot see. 
This person has fallen into major kufr. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, this person has not. Though it is still called sihr, this person has not fallen into major kufr. Then you have D, the last point. The use of potions and medications to affect the faculties of a person. So this person then hallucinates or sees things that are not so in external reality or to harm him when this does not involve connecting to the devils. It's just a mere potion that they're using. <coughs> Chemistry. Or receiving such knowledge from the devils this person has not fallen into major kufr because they have not made that connection with the shayateen. Now to put things into perspective. Bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala he says in his commentary on the chapter pertaining to magic in Sharh Kitab al-Tawheed. Beautiful book that we inshallah one day will study in this masjid. Regarding the killing of a magician by Jundub al-Asdi. Before we get to that, what is the had of the magician? What is the punishment of the magician? Death. What if they repent? Death. By who? By the ruler. Not by any of us. Not by no common Muslim. Not by no father of a magician. Not by no leader of a tribe. It has to be by the appointed Muslim ruler. Under Islamic rule. This is not a Khariji state. Where a person has that mentality. They see the Hadd of Allah. And they say we will act out this Hadd of Allah against anyone who falls into that sin. This is specific to the ruler. Alone. To perform this. What is upon us is to warn people against such sin. Not to take out the had. Not to take out the punishment amongst the people. This is from extremism. Those who want to do it in every society that they walk into. This is not for us to do. This is specific for the Muslim ruler. Sheikh bin Baz, he said, some of the people from Ash-Shafi'i said, if the magic of the magician is through known things which harm, but which do not alter the minds, rather they harm and cause illness, and in which there is no claim of knowledge of the unseen. Ilm al -ghayb. They don't say they have ilm al -ghayb. And it was not from one of who seeks the service of the devils. They do not go to the shayateen and aid from them. They don't seek their isti'ana, their help, their aid. And does not perform that which Allah has prohibited of shirk. They did not fall into shirk. Does not perform that which Allah has prohibited of shirk. And other than that, then he is not killed. Because this is not from magic. Rather, it is from causing harm and oppression. Hence, and this is the had for that person in an Islamic country. In an Islamic ruling. Hence, he is merely beaten and disciplined as opposed to being killed. Because the intent behind killing the magicians in the view of the Sahaba, the companions of the Messenger وسلم, is to eliminate those who employ the jinn, worship other than Allah by worshipping the jinn, and claim knowledge of the unseen. Is that made clear? <coughs> Since this is what is found overwhelmingly amongst the the Sahara, the magicians, so such a one is killed and that is what is correct. This is with regards to the had of the true magician. But as mentioned previously, he said, the one who does the trickery without falling into associating with the jinn, falling into matters of shirk, claiming to know the unseen, then this person has not fallen into major kufr of a sihr. Does that make sense? He said, this is not magic. Shaykh bin Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, as occurs here included in this article, and I'll send it inshallah, in his explanation, he said, magic is of two types. Magic through which a magician becomes a kafir, a disbeliever. And that is magic through the route of seeking aid from the shayateen.
from the devils. This one disbelieves due to the saying of Allah. Sulaiman did not disbelieve, but the shayateen disbelieved teaching min magic and such things that came down. This was the ayah that was mentioned earlier. And it is obligatory to kill this magician due to his disbelief and corruption. And he means so by saying that the Muslim ruler, I reiterate, this is for the Muslim ruler to take out such punishment. So if he repents, he is killed for his corruption and not disbelief. Is that made clear? So if he repents from his sin, He's killed due to the corruption that he caused, not due to the fact that he is a mortad, because he's repented. And magic through which a magician does not become a disbeliever, and this is what occurs through potions, like was mentioned earlier, used to harm others. However, it is necessary for him to be killed in order to repel his corruption from harming others. This is the fatwa of bin Uthaymeen. So the saying of the author, rahimahullah, and the male and female magician, he has this detail to it. So we say, if he disbelieves through his magic, his repentance is not accepted with the consideration that we are establishing the prescribed punishment upon him. And if he does not become a disbeliever through his magic, we establish the prescribed punishment out upon, out of purification of the land, of his likes, but not due to his disbelief. So, Sheikh bin Uthaymeen had a different opinion with regards to the person who does not form, fall into the act of sihr in itself. He said, but because due to his harm and the corruption that he has caused, that the had is to be taken out onto them. What is upon us, my brothers and sisters? First, we understand that sihr in all its forms, is hated by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Sihr, in its true form, takes the person out of the fold of Islam. Sihr, illusionary, and true sihr, haqiqi, takes a person out of the fold of Islam. Mere trickery does not, but this is not something that we accept. Because that which leads to haram is haram. So rule out trickery altogether, even merely sitting and flicking out cards with your child, telling him pick one, putting it at the bottom and showing him is that your card. These are all forms of trickery one should run away from. Steer far away from. This is not from the characteristics of a Muslim. One day you're showing card tricks to your son. Next day he's popping a rabbit out of a hat. Third day he's separating between husband and wife. What do we see? And I want to bring attention to this matter. What do we see nowadays in our children's cartoons? By Allah. What I see and I've noticed. Two things. Other than the. The rubbish LGBTQ stuff. Other than that rubbish. What I see major lately. Music. And sihr. They capture the children's attention. So much. By music. And then they throw sihr into there. And what does a kid want to do? He wants to grab a wand and do magic. The whole time. They embed shirk into the minds of our children without us realizing it. We have to stay on top of it. By Allah, we have to. Yani that very term, oh, he's a magician, and he's good at something, he's a magician. Steer away from. A'udhu billah. Run away from such a term. When a person's doing a great job, magic. Stay away from it. That's getting the tongue used to saying that this person has fallen into shirk. A'udhu billah. Something slip of the tongue, but it leads a person to accepting kufr, to accepting shirk. Mind games, the shaitan plays with the human race in order to lead them to hellfire. How much time have we got left? 
inshallah we'll end the class here because we don't have too much time left and we'll leave time for question and answer next week ta'ala, we'll touch on a pamphlet written by Abu Khadija more so about what sort of different types of magic there are from astronomy and stuff like that horoscopes and whatnot and remedies remedies against magic or those afflicted with magic subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik